This is uh, Nicole's nightmare is going live. Ah, don't tell him that. <laughs> Let me put it down a little bit so you can see. But what we'll do is we will um, we'll post this as a regular video at the end of the live. Because we want to talk about some things, right? Yes. We both made lists, but we haven't read each other's lists yet. Mm -mm. And uh, we don't normally give this guy screen time, but he's looking at the screen right now. He sees himself like a mirror. You see yourself? <laughs> so good morning, everybody from uh, Pacific Northwest. Yes. Good you were going to say something. So. No, I was just going to say good morning. <laughs> good morning. Zao on, zao on. <laughs> if we get in trouble with Fox, we can do this one. Hey, like this. It's mesmerized by the hat on, the hat off. Loves it. <laughs> Uh, okay, so what we're going to do in this video is, like the title said, we want to um, say hi to everybody. And first off, what we want to say is, if you guys have questions, like we can see the questions in the comments going crazy up the live chat right now. And we want to talk about some things, um, like the title says, you know, the we want to talk about the things that are most difficult about living the life that we've chosen to live, and the things that are most great about living the life we've chosen to live. Nicole has a list of 10 of each. I have a list of 10 of each, 10 pros, 10 cons to our life. Your 10 pros, 10 cons. What about your 10 pros, 10 cons? <laughs> <laughs> then um, after that, I wanna talk about things that we think that people can do um, if they want to break out of the matrix and society and live more closely with nature. And things that we do currently that make it easier for us to uh, have a great life out here in nature. Um, right now, one thing is some incense that keeps the mosquitoes away because we're trying to keep the mosquitoes away from Mr. Fox here. Uh, and then we want to talk about costs, some of the costs that we've incurred and the money of living the life that we've lived. I don't think the money is a real big deal if you were born and raised in nature. I think the money becomes a big deal if you were born and raised in the city and you're trying to get back to nature. I think that's where the, in my opinion, I don't know about you. Yeah. So if you guys have questions and comments, we see so much love. Um, we can kind of read everybody's thing. Give us a bunch of heart emojis right now. And we want to come in 15 minutes at the end to answer all your questions. So if you have a question, you can post it now, but probably copy it and paste it again at the end when we say, okay, questions are open for 15 minutes. Um, we're slightly out of focus. I don't think so, are we? Maybe the focus is on the wood and not on us. I just tapped us, so we'll see if it's uh, better. I mean, it's live and we're in the forest, so aren't you guys amazed that we can actually come to you live in HD from the forest? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm amazed because all morning this morning, I only had one bar of 3G and I couldn't do anything but text. Um, but one thing that's been great for us is the Starlink that we've... Yeah. Um, Starlink has been a game changer for us, for sure. That we power with a solar panel, yeah. What do you think? I mean, I think it really has. Like, think about... It's been a huge game changer, because, like, for us to upload a YouTube video, um, you know, our videos are pretty long. It would literally take overnight, and then some in the morning. Um, but now it takes maybe about, like, an hour to upload a YouTube video, so it's, it's really nice. So for everybody watching... Oh, we have some people doing... Um, Super chat. Thank you so much, Daniel. We'll try to call you out. We never done a live like this before. So if you guys like videos like this once in a while, let us know if you like it and if you have topics you want us to touch on in the future. So let's get right to it. The, the 10 things that we think are the most difficult about living a life, quote unquote, off the grid, closer to nature and the 10 things that are beautiful about it. Why don't we go for the should we go for the cons first or the pros? You guys tell us in the chat right now. Should we do the pros first or the cons? Do you want to hear the negatives or the positives? <clears throat> I think we should do the negatives first. Okay, then I'll trust Nicole. We'll do the, well, we'll do the negatives first. <laughs> Just so we can end on a good note. Cons, pros, cons, pros, oh. cons, pros. <laughs> uh, and I only have six. I can only think of oh. six things. So. Only six cons? And yes. with my list... Because <laughs> you know why I like that? Because as a guy, I'm trying to make a good life for the girl out here, and if she could only think of six bad things... And a lot of mine yes. are a lot of, like, love-hate. So I'm going to say, like, I hate... Not hate, that I... It's hard for mm. this, but I kind of love it. So it's mm. going to be... I don't yeah, know love, if there's a word for that, hate. but it's a love-hate relationship with it. Yeah. 
Um, do you want me to go first? Or? I also want to know everybody's age out there and uh, what city they're watching from. If you can tell us, I'm going to look at one that calls. Yeah, I want to hear your six. Let's go. You want me to list all mine off? Or? I think you should list like one, talk about it for a second briefly, okay. and then list two and briefly. Well, my one and two kind of go hand in hand. But uh, so my one and two is power and water. Like electricity. Yeah. So, you know, it's, we don't just walk inside and flip a switch. It's a lot harder. Like we have to conserve our energy. We have mm -hmm. to know how many bars we have. Um, we have to know how much energy something takes. So like right now. Like what are the things you're wanting to charge all the time? Yeah, like, you know, phone, computers, uh, a refrigerator. You know, a refrigerator has been really hard for us, or a freezer. Um, we can only really have the refrigerator on during, like, really sunny weeks because then we can charge the batteries up more. So, like, right now it's really cloudy, so we don't have the refrigerator on. Um, so stuff like that is really, it's really hard, and it can get really frustrating. Mm -hmm. um, and then with water, we collect rainwater, which we have an abundance of, but sometimes during you know weeks of just straight sun sunshine during the summer the water does drop so sometimes i'll want to take a shower but the water thing is low so that hard but again i also love showering with rainwater and you know <laughs> like when we weren't here giving birth to fox you missed that the most showering with rainwater yeah because i don't i'm not a big fan of the city water you know it's a lot mm. of like chlorines in it and stuff so here it's just so pure and <laughs> Um, so yeah, those are my first two, is power and water. Okay. And then what's your third one? <clears throat> my third is, um, so I love, you know, as you guys know, working out, fitness, and I love going on runs. I love running. So running um, slash walking, and now that I have Fox, you know, I can't put him in a stroller and go for a walk because there's, you know, bears and cougars and, and all that. And the terrain, you know, we don't have a concrete road it's gravel so it's a little bit more rough um so that you know that's hard for me um sorry let's go um is just the running is just going out and just going for a run it's a little bit more as opposed harder. to like in in the city you just go to the gym the gym or you can you know there you can run on the sidewalk or yeah. you know there's like running paths and stuff like that so um so that's my number three bless you, bless you. <laughs> um my number there's no medical nearby. Mm. Um, you know, it's a little bit harder for us to go get medical attention um, if something goes wrong. Um, I mean, that's pretty straightforward on that one. Okay, that's number four. Number five. But we're still young and careful and also, like, we strive to be healthy, so we don't need the medical. Yeah. Unless an accident, you know? Yeah. Um, number four. Number five, uh, family and friends. Mm. Um, you know, we are pretty remote. Number five? That's your number one. Well. For sure. Now they can come visit. So, like, mm. it's oh, yeah, yeah. it's not my number one. Because, like. During COVID. During COVID was really hard. Mm. Now they can come visit. Uh, you know, a lot of my family has passports. So um, we've had family come and visit. And that's another love, which I'll explain later. Um, you know, showing them the place is really nice. Right. But, um, I put that on my list, too. Yeah, oh, really? Showing people and seeing it in their eyes. Yeah. It's really yeah. Cool. Anyways, we're going to get to the pros. Uh, yeah. Um, so number six, my last one is battling the mold. Oh, uh, here it's very, you know, wet. <laughs> uh, so we, our clothes are always somewhat damp or we always have to keep the wood stove going. Um, we have like little mold things like calcium chloride trays set up. So that's, you know, something that's really difficult and really hard and frustrating. Mm -hmm. So those are your six. Electricity, water, running, walking, exercise, um, medical, hospital, family, friends, and mold. Those are the cons. Yeah, that's it. But, but we deal with all that stuff the way we deal with it. Well, and yeah, I think I think every month it goes by, I think by, even living in the city, there's, there's you know, yeah. people. Like, you, you can't live somewhere that's absolutely amazing and perfect. There's always going to be things that are a little bit frustrating Like, difficult. if you move to Boston and your family's in L.A., you're going to miss your friends and family. Yeah. Right? He wants this hat on like me. Cool. My list. Should we do mine? Yeah. I think your list is, um, now I know what to solve as a guy. You're always trying to solve the problems. <laughs> Let's post your list on the fridge and we can... Mosquito <laughs> on your hand there. We can check it off. Oh. <clears throat> uh, okay, so... You need to... Yeah, you can... We can trade. Hello. 
I think this is interesting, guy's perspective versus girl's perspective. Oh, that's one of the things I should have put on my list is I've learned a lot about um, men and women being closer to nature, you know? Mm -hmm. Like you get caught up in the city with, you know, and girls got to be equal all the time, but we're not. Girls are 50%, guys are 50%, but guys are 50% different. Girls are 50% different. Like I just have things, I have strengths that have come out in this environment and you have strengths that have come out in this environment. Oh. We're not the same. I don't know if you agree. <clears throat> no, for sure, I could totally agree. Flip logs like you. I can't care for the home like you. I can't care for <laughs> Fox like you. Seriously. Okay, <clears throat> so bad things that I said is number one is like, well, these, these are not in order. Yeah. These are just 10 random things. So restaurants, I really miss restaurants a lot. I, I didn't realize till we came out here. There's 2,000 people watching. Thanks for watching here. You're welcome. I didn't realize how um, therapeutic restaurants are until I came out here. I didn't realize how every day I would go to, you know, lunch at a Vietnamese pho place or, you know, a Mongolian stir fry or Chipotle or something like that. And I would really love that hour or two by myself eating my food and, you know, gathering my my mana for business or for personal and i don't have that you have to make your own food and <clears throat> i really miss that mm -hmm. or taking you out on a date to a restaurant it's like so to mentally therapeutic and emotionally therapeutic to go to and have somebody else cook for you yeah i think that's an incredible well, you part cook of life. for me so i don't have to about that <laughs> <laughs> welcome to the jake mace restaurant um number two public events i i like to say i'm an introverted guy i think i'm pretty introverted but I've always taught groups and people for a living, so I tend to thrive in a teaching environment. But if you put me in like a party environment where there's no task and everyone's just hanging out with a group, that's like my nightmare. I don't know what to do and I get real stressed out inside. I try to bring it outside, but it takes a lot out of me to be in that party type environment. But I've always loved public events like performances, movies, you know, um, being out in public where I'm not the center and I can just watch somebody else play music or perform or a movie, things like that. I love that. And I miss that. Mm -hmm. Like if we were in a big city, LA, Phoenix, New York, yes. I would take you to public events all the time. Yeah. Number three, um, shipping. So the shipping to get things here is really tough. And yeah. one of the things that's real amazing about the modern world is, you know, a lot of things are just at your fingertips. I want this. It shows up two days later. Mm -hmm. That doesn't happen where we are. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. No, for sure. I mean, if something says it's going to take three weeks, it takes two months. I ordered a high chair maybe like two months ago, and I still, yeah. I still I'm missing one piece, and I don't even know where it's at. So it's... You guys saw the Messiah rocking chair that took a month and a half longer just yeah. because we're so remote. Yeah. <clears throat> or the shipping costs are like through the roof to where we're just yeah. like, man, we're not even going to worry about it. When COVID hit, I was looking up uh, buying toilet paper online and the cost of it to get it here was $800 for a 12 pack. <laughs> it was insane. No, no joke. <laughs> Thank you very much to a super chat to uh, Adventures of Two Wheel Tim. That's a cool 52 name. Santa Cruz, you both inspired me to pursue my own channel. Thanks for sharing your lives. Cool, thanks Tim. Cool, I like your, <clears throat> uh, your name. <laughs> so the next one is internet. I mean, honestly, you like to say don't have the internet, but the internet is an amazing, um, an amazing tool for just comforting your mind at night with some videos or sharing a laugh with a partner or watching movies. <clears throat> and the first, my voice is going, <clears throat> the first three, four years of us being out here, we couldn't do that a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Nicole was just saying, there's no internet right now. And our one bar 3G would go away. Or if there's, there's constant power outages in this area. Mm -hmm. um, and you just lose your internet connection. So mm -hmm. if something were to have happened, we had no way to call our emergency or anybody else. And Starlink has been a game changer, but until now, internet has been something that I've really wanted yeah. for us here. Yeah. Number five is help. If you, um, a lot of times I think in the city, you conduct yourself in a more careless fashion because you know in the back of your mind, if I get sick, I can eat whatever I want and get as fat as I want and get as unhealthy or get as skinny as I want, which is not always healthy get as unhealthy as I want because I've got the medical system just down the road. Or I can take risks because I got the hospital down the road. Mm -hmm. um, and we don't have that, so it's caused us to eat healthy, conduct ourselves healthy. 
walk a little more careful. <laughs> yeah, so we talk, we call it like sloth-like energy out here. Be like a sloth. Yeah. Um, over two thousand of you watching. Thanks so much. Hold your questions. Like you, like I said, at the end we're gonna answer questions from you guys for fifteen minutes. So just hang out for a second. Um, number six, the big three land animals for me. Um, I don't know about if Nicole is worried about it as me, but I'm constantly up at night. You know, every sound that I hear, thinking of bears coming through the yurt like it did before. Um, hearing the wolf, hearing the cougar. The cougar, I don't hear the cougar, but I, I notice, um, you know, the dogs get on high alert for like a week. They see it and they're on high alert. Um, so the dogs have been a game changer for that and the electric fence has been a big thing for that. Storms and, or sorry, and then the big three land animals and ants. <laughs> ants ants are have so proven hard. to be so hard. Um, and these aren't your small ants. These are like your big carpenter ants. And oh my gosh. Yeah, because we don't want to like spray pesticides in our garden or in the yurt that then will that they will take into the land of the garden. Yeah. But these carpenter ants, they don't bite. They don't sting. But they're, they're just, just annoying. They're everywhere. Eating the wood. Yeah. Everywhere. <laughs> they are. No. <clears throat> so they have been um, tough. And. Number seven, storms and wind. I think storms, but storms are really a pro. Like I love the storms and there's definite ecotourism out here in the winter time to watch the storms, but the wind blows these gigantic conifer trees like they're sticky palm trees and it's it's intimidating. Yeah. But only in the winter for the most part. Uh oh. And uh, friends and family has been a con, you know, getting friends and family out here. You know, my family hasn't stayed as close as Nicole's family, but that being said, I still, even if I wanted to pay for my family to come visit, you know, there's a lot of logistics into coming out here outside of just the money. So it's been a tough uh, thing, friends and family. Number nine, um, endless rain with no sun. Yeah, oh, I thought I had that on my list. I think that, the you know, <laughs> you always crave what you're missing. And um, here, there's so much rain and not enough sun but like in Phoenix, there's so much sun, it's depressing. Yeah. So in Phoenix, it rains and I start crying because it's so uh, magical. But here it's so much rain, you want the sun. So I think humans always just want that balance. <laughs> uh, and then lastly is um, cold mornings. You know, honestly, one of the things I've realized I'm really good as a guy Is that I can go forever. You know, I can take I can take the elements a little harder than Nicole. I can I can work hard on no sleep longer than Nicole, and I can um, I can push my muscles harder and longer than Nicole. Um, I'm not saying that she's. I mean, she's the strongest woman I've ever met. But I can just I can keep going and going and going and going. And one of the things I take pride in is that I warm and amazing in here. Or I can chop all this wood and put it here for the winter. I take pride in that, you know, that male strength and endurance. And I love that. You know, I don't think of it as a superiority thing. I think of it as a, you know, it's my duty to to bring that natural ability to the table. So cold mornings, I, I it is cold. Like to get up in the morning is tough in the winter time. What do you think? Yeah, <clears throat> I think if I were to add, you. If I were to add number seven, I forgot about the rain and the the dark winters. Yeah. It's, it's, those are really tough. For sure. So now we move into the pros. How about I take the the big man here? And yeah. What do you love about uh, living this close to the land and quote unquote off the grid and in the forest here? Um, oh, there's a lot. I actually put 11. <laughs> oh my gosh. Sorry. Let's go. Um, so the quiet i love how quiet it is here um you really are immersed with nature you hear the birds you hear everything um you there's no sirens so like that's the other love hate relationship of not being close to medical is hard but we don't hear the sirens here we don't hear the you know like every time we go to the city we're like oh my gosh there's so many sirens going off it's just crazy yeah um so i love the quiet it's even at night i mean it's just so quiet Number two, being surrounded by nature. You know, I love that we're just this by you hear People everything. People say nature bathing, but we're forced into it. Um, it's quiet, but you hear the birds and like you'll hear like a raven flying. You'll hear the flapping of the wings. You'll hear the yurt. You hear the 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 bees buzzing outside. It's like you think that they're right next to you, but you're like, oh, they're just outside. Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, number three, the wood stove. I absolutely love having a wood stove. Mm. During the summer, it's kind of sad when the wood, like you're just staring at it and there's no fire going. It's it the really, heart of the home. It really is the heart of the home. When it's going, it's just like, I don't know, it just brings it alive. Um, I love that we can cook on it. Uh, we don't have to use propane. It's, you know, you can get warm and toasty by it, but it also just lifts your spirit. Uh, the smell of it, just adding wood to it, just like everything about the wood stove, I absolutely love. Mm. Um, it's probably, I should have put that as number one. It's like my favorite. Um, number four. Plus it dries things out. It helps with your mold issue. Yeah. I mean, there's just so much. I love having a wood stove. Pro providing for ourselves too. Like, yeah. you know, we're not relying on the system. Like if the power were to go out and we had no heat, yeah, that would be really scary. Like we are able, we provide for ourselves. Like we have the wood to keep it warm. It's almost there. more predictable because we know that we're responsible for it. Yeah, which is really nice. Um, number four, uh, being able to provide for ourselves, um, you know, being out here in nature, learning all the different edible plants and catching, you know, our own food and stuff is, what are you looking for? This? His little necklace. I think, oh. Um, providing for ourselves, uh, I think I just said that, um, is, uh, I, I, I love that. I love being able to just going out and catching fish or getting prawn and crab and knowing what we're having for dinner and, you know, learning about all of the edible plants around in our area. And um, so I love, I love that. Um, number five, no neighbors. <laughs> we have no neighbors. I mean, they're like acres and acres away. Well, neighbors, but you're talking about like, like stamped out. Yeah, it's so nice. Um, the place that we were staying at when we had Fox, you know, they were really close quarters. Like you can hear your neighbor sneeze. And it was just the craziest thing. We heard somebody vomiting for an hour and it a was half. Just, oh, I hated it so much. <laughs> so being here, it just, you don't, you don't hear anybody. Aww. Um, so I liked, uh, it's just, I guess, coming to the quiet thing again. Um, having no neighbors is nice. Um, so number six, I know I said that I, this is hard for me is the running, but it, like I said, it's that love hate relationship. Um, I love running here because, you know, you do have the bear and the cougar, so you're always on high yeah. alert. I love running in the terrain. Um, you know, it's not just a f straight flat concrete surface, you know, like you have to watch out for things. Um, and if you guys have been following along, you know that I did fall and cut my knee <laughs> open <laughs> because of a rock. By, because of running, um, so it makes you more alert, you know, you're not just like zoned out listening to music, just running for the sake of running. Like I'm actually like running um, with the animals and having to watch where I step and stuff. And I think that makes it really fun. Um, number seven, being able to build, uh, to build cool stuff. Um, living in the city, I mean, if you have a backyard, you're able to build, you know, probably a pizza oven stuff. But like here we're able to build an epic pizza oven and uh, a wood shed and some bunky cabins and a year over there and some really awesome raised beds. Like we're really able to just build some awesome Get up, stuff. think of something and do it. Yeah, uh, which I never thought I would. Where a lot of cities, ever. you know, if you want to put a roof on something, you got to get a permit. Yeah. Got to wait, got to pay money. Yeah, here we just like, oh, we, well, we want to build a smoke, like a salmon smoking shed. Okay, let's go for it, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think that's really cool. I love that. I love that we're able to do that. Number eight, raising my family out here. Uh, I'm really just so happy that Fox gets to be out here. He loves being outside um, and just seeing seeing all this for the first time through his eyes is just really special. Do you want me to take them? No. Um, I just, I love that I'm going to be able to raise my, or that I am raising my family out here. Um, uh, number nine, being boat access only. I love that it that we have to take a boat to get out here because every time that we go into town or we're coming back here or we're going fishing, we always see some really awesome, cool stuff. Oh, yeah. uh, we see so many eagles. Like sometimes we can't even count on our hands how many times we see eagles. Um, we see whales. We'll still see dolphins. Um, we see otters. I mean, you guys, we you know tried to show you guys as much as we see, but like. We see so much on our boat rides home, and the sun sets and the sun rises, and just the middle of the day, the clouds. Only film less than ten percent of it. It's you can't capture what we. It's just so beautiful. I just so breathtaking um, what we see, um, just on our short little or long boat rides. <laughs> you know? Exactly. Um, into town or coming back. Um, 
Number 10, um, showing our friends and family this. Like when they finally do come up here and seeing all of this for the first time and seeing just what we've created. I love, I love seeing it through their eyes. Like it's just, I, I love it. It's, it's just so beautiful up here and having them see it and being like, wow, you weren't exaggerating. Like this really is a pretty magical place. Um, so I love, I love when they come and visit. Yeah. Um, it's just, re it's inspiring to us to see it in friends and family's eyes. Yeah. Like just the nature, just the, just the nature of it. They're just, wow. Yeah. And it's great. Um, so I did have one extra. Um, I love being able to be uh, witnessing the actual seasons. So, uh, when you're in the city, like you, you notice the seasons, but like here you, like you are really forced into the seasons. Like you feel the shift and the change going from summer to fall. Like you really feel that you feel when it's like, Oh, it's winter now. Mm -hmm. Um, Oh, like, Oh, the bugs are gone. Like that's now shifting into fall. Like you are really in the seasons. And I love that so much. Um, cause in the city you're just distracted by everything and there's not really a whole lot of trees and you know, like you, you don't get that. Mm. With being here, it's, it's uh, really immersed in the seasons. You want me to kind of take them for a loop? Let's switch. Okay, so that's my my love. Oh, I love you. I love I'll it. be right back. I'm going to take them for a quick loop. You can also bring back the, the wind chimes, the small one. He'll love that. You, you left me alone here in front of the people. Uh-oh. <laughs> so my good things, I'll go through them real quick. So number one, um, forcing you to live in and at peace with nature. I think it's really important in life being from the martial arts um, and gardening world and teaching people how to do that. A lot of people say, you know, how do I get motivation for life? How do I get motivation for fitness? I'm just not motivated. Well, nobody is. You have to force yourself into situations where you have to perform. So Nicole and I are forced to go to bed and get up by nature. And so therefore we get to live with nature, you know? So if you're, if you're in a city and you've got too many buildings around and you don't, and you want more nature, just to go hiking can be a thing. So make your life nature and force yourself into uh, a natural life. Number two, no zoning or permits, you know, goes without saying, um, if you've owned your own house or your own business, I've owned corporate building and residential buildings and zoning and permits are, um, are difficult to deal with, especially when you are um, not doing it all the time. You know, when you do it once in a while, you have to learn the system. So finding a plot of land that's off the beaten path, um, this plot of land is very difficult because it's very remote, it's very wet, um, but because it's so remote, there's no zoning or uh, permits required. So that was one of the, the pros and each of the parcels out here it used to be forestry land, and now it's uh, been rezoned for residential, and each of, the, each of the parcels had a well, and that was real important to me too. So number three, wild herbs and foods and the ocean. Um, if you go to a place like, I don't know, what's a good example? Actually, maybe I won't say it like that. If you're in this climate, there's just a lot of nourishing, things in the wild around you. So there's things that will kill you. There's mosquitoes and there's ants and bear and wolf and cougar and orca and shark. But there's also everything to do with nourishment. There's herbs and teas and mushrooms and um, edible plants, edible trees. There's seaweeds of the ocean, fish and, um, and bivalves of the ocean. Oh, it's water time. This is his favorite thing is drinking water from a cup. He's so good at it too. I mean, I started even to distract you. It's so cute. <laughs> nice job. So I, I enjoy the, the wild and every season, especially spring, summer, and fall, I like to know at least 10 foods and herbs that are medicinal or edible in every season so that you always know what's around you or more. Uh, number four, um, it, it's taught me living in the forest here. When we go back to the city, the forest has taught me why cities are structured the way they're structured. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It's okay if we get soaking wet, you can splash it. No, it's okay. So if, you, if, you're, if you're born in the city, you live in the city and you die in the city, I think sometimes you're so busy trying to make it with income and job and 
apartment and place to stay and mortgage and, and you just don't even think about you know why is everything structured how it's structured mm -hmm. and i think it's important for humans to think more broadly and conceptually mm -hmm. and going in the forest for a long period of time i'm talking years you go back to the city and even though you might not like certain aspects of it you kind of i kind of get it i'm like oh i understand how this came to be and that came to be and why all this needs to be rechanged probably or needs to be changed but I understand how it became like this mm -hmm. and why we should go back to this. Yeah. So this has been a good teacher for me. <clears throat> Number five, it's also been humbling. This experience has been humbling for me. Um, not only the workload, having to stay safe during the workload um, and the, the fauna that's around, the animals that cause you to respect them. Mm -hmm. The flora, like... Honestly, it's the plants, you know, I've dropped into holes and things like that. Everything around me has made me a little bit more small. I think of these Chinese scrolls that show the landscape being so big and the humans being so small. I feel like that. I feel this small. <laughs> That's the fox sound. And it's, um, it's been great. I really enjoy that feeling. Uh, number six, it's, it's helped me save money. A lot of comments on our videos are about, um, you must be rich to do this. I don't know what those comments, but that's such a, a diluted mentality. If you, if you buy a very inexpensive piece of land that's extremely remote and you build your own stuff and you forage for your own food uh, and you take responsibility for your life and live as close to nature as possible, you save a lot of money. You can live without a car. You can live without a mortgage. You can live without credit cards. You can live without high food prices. Money save, money save, money save, money save. That's that. So I think that it's been a way to save money out here. Um, Nicole is just uh, breastfeeding Fox for a second. She's going to come back in. Um, <clears throat> so number seven, working for yourself. I can't even tell you working for somebody else is like torture for me. I mean, I'm sure there's worse tortures in the world. I'm going to talk to Nicole because she's looking at me just off camera. <clears throat> she's going to come back in in a second. But working for somebody else for their dream, for their business, and they're making a hundred times more income than me is just like torture. For sure. um, and so when I get up, if I cook my own food, catch my own fish, harvest my own herbs and plant life, if I start my own fire for cooking in heat, and then if I go and enjoy nature that day, I've done that all for myself. Mm -hmm. That's building something. You're building it for you. Yeah, exactly. Like, cool. yeah. Like, I hope the camera can hear Nicole. Building our pizza oven, you know, we're building it and then we get to use it. So you guys watch the videos, but we get to use it every day. And so you're not building. Now, if I did, if I built pizza ovens full time, I think I would hate it. Yeah. Because I'm constantly building other people's pizza ovens. And like the martial arts, I enjoyed doing martial arts full time. I enjoyed teaching because teaching was a way that I can do martial arts full time. But really, I wanted to just do martial arts full time myself. I wanted to train and practice and spar and do all that stuff. So really, the teaching was at first a way I can I can stop my other job. But I love working for myself. I mean, yeah, that, that, that's it. Uh, number eight, uh, the look on friends and family's faces um, when you bring them out and they get to light the fire themselves or chop wood or see the orca or see the nature, be on the boat in the ocean. I just love the look on their faces um, to see city folk come to the country and we get to give them a good old time. Mm -hmm. So number nine, <clears throat> I think that being out here is humbling, which was number five, but it's also empowering because... You see, honestly, you see how nature is easier than the city. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it. For me anyways. I don't know about for Nicole, but I think surviving and thriving in nature is infinitely easier than surviving and thriving in the city. I've been around thousands of people um, in cities, Vancouver, Phoenix, and I've traveled a lot throughout you know, the United States and other countries. And everybody is having such a hard time trying to make it and there's there's people that are thriving i'm sure many of you watching this video you might be thriving you might have had a lot of success in love 
or family or health of body or money or your goals. But a lot of people are not. A lot of people are finding it real hard to be born in the city and make it there. And making it in the forest, I think, is because as long as you respect nature's law. And you, and you have to learn how to build a fire. Learn how to build a fire. Learn how to chop wood. Learn how to chop wood and cook. And forage for food. Forage for food. So fishing and all that. And then find a family. <laughs> and you get those needs met and your life is golden. I mean, like, your life is great. Um, in my opinion. So, number 10, um, the water, the air, the natural resources. I love drinking the well water we have. It's like a spring. It's um, very high, healthy pH, um, very clean, no harmful min minerals. It's basically fresh, amazing spring water. I love the air that we breathe. You know, every day Nicole and I are out here working. Every breath we take is probably the most oxygen-rich air negative ion rich air you can breathe um, the ocean a minute walk away in the forest right here so i mean i love it and um i love working out in the sun and getting the blonde hair working out in the sun you know when it is sunny and uh i love learning about the natural resources of my area now if i was in phoenix there'd be different natural resources you know the sun and the heat are powerful natural resources but here we have different natural resources. So I'd be interested in knowing the chat right now. What are some of the natural resources in your area? And are you out there using them in a respectful way? Um, so here we have wood, we have rain, um, and we have the ocean. These are all very powerful natural resources that we try to respect and live in balance with, but also use to live our best life. So there's my 10 positives that I love about living out here with you. Of course, Number one positive is Nicole and Fox. I love that they're out here. So <clears throat> now I want to just touch on real quick. Um, Hello, everybody. Hey there, Nicole's back. Touch on real quick um, the money. A lot of people have questions about money all the time and uh, want to talk about the money it takes. So as Nicole's getting ready here, first thing I want to say is I think it's it costs no money if you're born into a life that's close to nature. So if your parents built their own cabin, that log cabin, and you're born farming and gardening and hunting and fishing and building your own stuff, <laughs> you don't need to stress the money. You're already there. Yeah. So it's people that have left nature, gone to the city, and now are giving birth to babies. Those babies, I think, have a hard time getting back to nature without money because to break out of the matrix it takes morpheus sucking you out of that pod with that goo and keanu reeves goes down the, the drain Stop, pipe we don't do you know so to get out of the matrix get out of the city takes disturbing money disturbing scene of the whole movie yeah like i hope that fox um basically did you just smile at your name <laughs> has no relationship with money i hope that he doesn't even feel like he needs it because he just knows oh nature is my is my companion yeah Anyways, but the cost, if you wanted to, to live a life in, the, in nature responsibly and off the grid from the city, I think that here's the things you might have cost for. The solar setup, that was your number one. Um, even in an area like ours, which is very rainy and the sun is a, a limited supply, we still get our power from solar. Mm -hmm. And solar might last either. for 30 to 50 years if you respect the panels. Yeah. So if you buy it now, if you can find panels, they're the cheapest they've ever been. Or if you can work, cut some deal with somebody. There's all different ways you can get panels and batteries. You don't need to always buy them. You can like work a deal. You can, you can think about other ways of mm -hmm. bartering. Um, those panels should last 30 to 50 years if you take care of them. And these lithium batteries that come out, they should also last, you know, tens of thousands of cycles, which means years and years and years and years, decades of of use. Yeah. Plus, there's also wind turbine. There's if there's a flowing stream, there's water turbine. Yeah. Um, like how bad do you want it? How, like how. Like, yeah. you can make it happen, you know? Right. And, so and ba of, baby steps. Like, I know it seems like a lot, and, like, where do you even begin? But you just, one day at a time, you just slowly work at it, you know? For sure. Because, like, when we first got here, we had a little small Jackery battery. Yeah. <laughs> and he he would he looked at me, and he's like, I know nothing about solar. And now you're like, you know everything about solar. Not everything, like, we're still learning, but, mm. you know, just like with any new skill, like a new job, you know, it's going to take a while ah. to, to get it going. Like, it just takes time and practice. 
But I had done some solar in the city. To say I know nothing about oh, solar. Oh, well, sorry. I was doing solar I, of this. You know what I mean. I, 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 I know what you mean. Um, so the yurt cost. Uh, okay, so solar cost. Usually you want to get a solar panel for less than a dollar a, um, uh, a dollar a watt uh, U.S. money. So if you have a 300 watt panel, which is a big one, 300 watts, you want to get that for less than 300 bucks. And you can do that now if you if you look around for some deals. The yurt cost. Um, yurts have been great. You know, I think that we want to build a home that gives us more space, but uh, the yurt for five years has been great. And I would And there's tons of different sizes, different companies, different pricing, like or build wherever yourself. you are, you can have a small one, a big one, mm -hmm. a medium sized one, or yeah, build one yourself. Like uh, the red one you've seen in our videos um, from living in turnt in from living in tent i think they range in price from five to ten thousand dollars so that was like a six thousand dollar yurt i think and that's a 16 footer and the yurt from pacific yurts i think if you want to pay retail for that one it starts at like fourteen thousand, but can be upwards in the range of yeah, twenty-five thousand. like 000. the doors you want to put in how many windows yeah like all the lavish stuff you know you can so fifth four, like 14 to twenty-five thousand for a really high quality yurt yeah. But you can get a, a smaller one for much less, you know, five to ten thousand. And in today's world, I mean, honestly, saving up five to ten thousand dollars, there's so many ways you can do that. And in two years from now, have that money to then go boom. Um, I think the yurt is a great way to like the whole yurt shows up on a pallet. It's such a minimal building. Mm -hmm. And then you... and there's a lot of companies that are coming out these days, like the Bunky. Like, bunkies are pretty expensive and they're easy to put up. Like, there's so many sure. just structures that are just... I mean, we're just now hearing about them because we're here off the grid. But, like, there's a lot of companies out there that we've been featuring that that you could build, you know, tiny homes and shipping right. containers and stuff like that. Module mm -hmm. homes and stuff. And you might want a bigger home. You know, I'm not saying that we should keep making ourselves live smaller and smaller and smaller until we own nothing. Yeah. But the yurt or the bunky or tiny home is a great way to get yourself free... And then comfortable to then where you can ultimately maybe build something a little bit better, a little bigger, or whatever else. Um, okay, number another um, cost coming up. We're gonna try to build a home out of recycled shipping containers. If you want to watch our channel, that's maybe telling a secret, but we're gonna take several, 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 several shipping containers and several, several. You're making it sound several, like several, 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 and stack them. <laughs> and then plasma cut and weld them and build a home out of them. And right now you can buy a shipping container for between two to $5,000, depending on the deal you get. So think about it. If you want a 2,000 square foot house, maybe looking at six 40 foot containers, you know, two to $5,000 per container, let's, let's say 4,000, you're looking at um, $24,000 for a full 2,000 square foot house. But then you gotta get to work building it out, you know? So. I think a lot of people in the city think they got to go buy a hundred thousand dollar house or a five hundred thousand dollar house and get a mortgage. And I can afford the down payment and the mortgage. Now you're in debt forever. I would suggest people is get back to nature and live humbly. And a yurt, a bunky, container home, tiny house. These are ways you can do that cheaply and for yourself. Uh, let's see here. I see your questions on the screen. I really want to answer them. Give us five minutes and we'll start answering questions. So hang up. <clears throat> Another cost is um, food. Uh, is food. Food, I think, for me, I'm so passionate about the cost of food. I think it's criminal how food is so expensive and how so many people in the city don't even know where the food comes from, don't even know how to grow it, how to harvest it, how to forage for it, and don't even know what the ingredients and things are. There, I, I said it. So what do we do um, for our food? Well, we have a garden. Yep. Uh, we forage, um, we hunt, fish, um, and we order a lot of bulk foods right. um, from like organic companies. Like it is possible for us to bring food here. I mean, it takes effort, but we can, so when we are in an area that has supplies, we buy in bulk. We buy bulk peanut butter and bulk flour and bulk mm -hmm. cornmeal and bulk, um, bulk uh, beans and bulk rice. Mm -hmm. And then if we have, if you did have money, and you wanted to splurge in some snacks, you could always do that. But you don't have to. You know, it's all there in nature for you. Yeah. <clears throat> but our goal is to get off the food grid. You know, we really, we're, you know, 
slowly I think expanding we are. our garden. I think we are. I think that if the apocalypse happened right now, we could harvest, grow, and forage for all of our own food That's easily. True, yeah. Like just, our meal last night, I think we had, it was like 85% all from our garden. and we, we could have cut the other stuff out. It was just kind of like a lavish, like rice. We made know? And we made some non bread with flour that we had. Yeah. But we did all the salad from our garden. We did all the fish from the ocean. We did all the spices from our garden. Yeah. All the potatoes from our garden. Um, we don't need the flour. We need potato flour. Yeah. But whereas they're an open, it's a crutch, you know. It is so. a crutch, yeah. We're, because we were born into going to the store, you know. But we don't need it, is what I'm trying to say. So if they're trying to get out the grid, food's a big thing. Yeah. And I feel that buying in bulk and knowing what's wild around you and how to catch and grow your own food is is powerful. That's the way to do it. Um, number five, what's the cost of like boats and vehicles? Well, we don't have, you know, a lot of people in this area have boats and boats can be easily can be eighty to hundred fifty thousand dollars for a boat. Do you guys know what the cost of boats are? Like a fishing boat that you might see that's just nonchalant and nothing looking might be $90,000. Mm -hmm. um, we don't have that. We have inflatable boats. <laughs> I mean, yeah. and we have our striker boats, but those boats are are far more economical than a big, you know, aluminum, um, you know, boat. And we get away with, you know, those strikers for everything, for travel, for fishing, for everything. Oh, they're great. It's yeah. a great company. And a really nice boat. Plus, if you buy them used, they're even cheaper. So, I mean, like, you could spend, you know, anywhere between 1000 to 10000 for a good quality boat if you want to fix it up or if you want to get something used. Car is the same thing. I do not understand the seven-year car loan, the six-year car loan, the five-year car loan. I don't understand buying a new car. I really don't. And having a car payment. Just buy a used car. I mean, there's amazing used cars out there. Like For sure. You know. And, like, for instance, the Prius... They last for a million miles. They get 50 miles a gallon, and you can buy a used Prius for like under $7,000. And you can also ride your bicycle, get in great shape, and save up for that used Prius in the meantime. I just, mm -hmm. I think that. Because also, like, vehicles anyways, yeah. uh, devalue and. They depreciate. Depreciate, you know? So, like, why would you invest in a car that you can't sell? For the same price that you got it, and then you're stuck with these payments, and so you need you know. the job to pay for the car, but you need the car to get to the job. Yeah, just move closer to the job and ride your bike. Yeah, I mean, like maybe you might have to have a fee for apartment, but you or definitely just don't get can... a, a new car; just get a used car that you can pay and be done with. You know, for sure. So I really believe in the power of used cars, used boats, <laughs> um, a used uh, bicycle, or just walking and running, and and making your life local to where you can walk and run to everything you need. And save that money away, you know. Yeah. Um, the last, the last couple of things here are, <clears throat> um, we save a lot of money being off the grid because we have no monthly statement fees for anything, mm -hmm. and we have no mortgage or car payments, so mm -hmm. we don't have that monthly um, water bill or monthly trash bill or monthly um, electricity bill, yeah. and then or with, mortgage payment. Yeah, and then with Fox, we don't pay for diapers because we use cloth. Just, um, you know, so like a lot of people spend so much money in diapers, huh? Yeah, but we're reusing, which is really great. Yeah. Um, but then it takes the effort. You have to build your own place. You have to wash those diapers. Yeah. Um, all that, but it's. I think it's worth it. Yeah. Anyway. And then, um, let's see here. The land itself. I think the land is the real cost in today's world. You know. Um, but there's so much land in the world. You know, you might think, you know, I want a piece of property in a big city. I don't think you do because in today's world, I'm sorry, we're alive in a time where I looked it up. They're saying that um, the average square foot of Manhattan real estate is almost $2,000 a square foot. San Francisco, $1,000 a square foot. If you bought an acre of land in the heart of San Francisco or Manhattan, that's like $43 million. Why would you move there? Yeah. And so you move close to nature, maybe an acre of land is $5,000 or $10,000. You know, there are properties out there that are very affordable like that. Or less. So I think these are the things you can do if you want to escape the system for low cost. Um, and then you'll be amazed that if you live close to nature for five years, 
you'll be saving so much money. You might find a way to make money even while you're out there. Maybe you'll sell your produce at a farmer's market. Maybe you'll learn or how to weed baskets. And you feel or... like, for me, I love dying, dying with plants now. Like, I never thought that I would be into that. And I love it. You know, you could make your own clothes and dye it with your own And you're getting into music and, and other things that, like, yeah. real skills like that, I think, are always be in demand. And herbalism and making my own teas and stuff like that. I mean, there's just so much that comes with being out here. You know I mean? And I think if you're into music, into plant dye, into gardening, into growing, making your own tea, being an herbalist, these are skills that people always have in demand. Yeah. So you're in a, you have a job because you have these skills. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyway, so those are some of the costs, I think, that we think of. That's how we think about money right, right there. And then last thing I wanted to mention is uh, things people can do and things that we do. So number one, I think learn, or excuse me, this is not the right list. This is uh, different. I think it's just a question and answer. Should we? Yeah, it's just a question. Oh, well, I wanted just to mention things you can do to get out of the city, I think, is, is learn skills right now that will get you out. Mm-hmm. What do you think? Yeah. Like, if you know how to garden, even if you join a community garden for free, have a little community plot, learning how to grow stuff. Do you see yourself? <laughs> and if you go and have a friend who's into construction, whatever else, go help them out for a few months. Maybe work for them for minimum wage and learn how to build stuff. Um, maybe if you have a friend who's an electrician, go learn how to wire things. Go learn how a solar panel is connected to a battery, to a controller, to an inverter. Um, and all of a sudden, if one day you wake up and you're in this, in the big city and you know how to garden, you know how to build stuff, you know how to wire stuff, you're going to think, why am I living here? Why don't I just go and do these skills in nature? Mm -hmm. So I think right now things you can do if money's an issue for you is to empower yourself with skills, real skills, like I just mentioned. Let's do questions and let's get off the air here. So we got 3000 of you watching. I don't know if you guys like this kind of live format, um, if you have a uh, super chat, if you want to do the super chat, that always jumps you to the top of the chat because the chat's going like crazy, and we all get to your question. But let's um, mm -hmm. let's lean in. Am I reading them? Yeah, let's do like uh, how many do you want to do? How about for like fifteen minutes? All right. However many we get to. So ask your question now if you have them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the number number one question. It's gonna drive me crazy. It said, what do you do for money? Oh. <laughs> I just talked about it for 20 minutes. Anyways, I'm not gonna answer that question, but that's the kind of thing that happens. Like, the other question is like, where's Reishi, the other cat? Yeah. We've answered this so many times. We think the cougar ate Reishi. It's very sad. I'm not it's like trying to- like a year to, ago. A year ago. <clears throat> We've answered it so many times. So here's the question. Okay, will you be having more children? Uh, oh, whoa. Let's call it out. That's from- uh, that's from Catherine Hunter. Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, I think we'll have possibly one more. It's up to you, honestly. Um, it's your, it's your, the uh, thought of going through pregnancy and birth again, even though I had, birth, or pregnancy was a very beautiful experience. The birth, as you guys know, was a little rocky, but like, I know for the second it won't be exactly like it. Um, the thought of going through that right now of like, oh, am I gonna have a second? Yeah, is like, ah. <laughs> If that makes sense. But yes, we will probably have one more because I really want Fox to have a sibling. Um, I know I grew up with brothers and sisters and I, you know, I love my brothers and sisters. We're all very close. Um, so yeah, I, I, I want to, I want to give him a sister or a brother, but probably just, probably just one more. <laughs> how, if you, um, if you did give him a sister or a brother, how far apart in age do you want them to be? Pretty close. Um, probably like two years years in age and we also got a super chat so we did yeah let me look it up um so sorry a long-winded answer but yes probably now, one more let's say that everything goes well and you have a second child for fox whether it's a brother or a sister and then do you want a third by way of like adoption or anything like like that yeah i mean we've always talked about adoption and that would definitely be um something that we can look into later you know Cool. Um, so yeah. <laughs> well, Sly Guy two seven one three did a super chat and he asked a question. So we'll go to Sly Guy super chat. My wife and I are interested in pursuing a lifestyle like you. What resources did you use to find your parcel of land? Yes, 
your question is you found it. I did. That was actually tough because Nicole and I were still, um, we were still, we, we were a couple and we were at the time. I don't know what, what label would we have? We had moved in together. We had lived together um, in Phoenix area. But you bought this property. We had been living together and then you decided, hey, it'd be great to do some woofing. And I said, let's just travel the world for a year. But we, we haven't even that. been together for a year. At that time. At that time, yeah. But then we went, we traveled the world for a year, went to 15 countries. Mm -hmm. And when we were in Thailand, about eight months in, I had been already looking for these properties and I wanted to do this for a long time. So just research. He just did research on kind of where he wanted to go. He wanted to come back to Canada. And yeah. um, I think just research, just kind of pick the area that you think that you want to go and just start doing research, <laughs> you know, just. I done research for years, like, even before I knew Nicole, I had been like a, a graveyard shift searcher online of but just like beautiful properties. But you also like, looked at places properties. in um, New Zealand, New Zealand, and Canada, uh, Canada America, Mexico, and Mexico, and all this stuff. So like, pick like areas that you feel like you might want to go, and then just slowly start to look into them and visit them and stuff like that. Or you don't have to visit. I mean, we bought this place sight unseen. <laughs> We bought it sight unseen. I really wanted to um, to go remote in Mexico, honestly. I just always love that final scene of the Shawshank Redemption. Movies are powerful for me. I, I like movies a lot. The final scene of the Shawshank, of the Shawshank Redemption where Andy like crawls through the sewer. He escapes like Shawshank, he gets the money, and then he helps Morgan Freeman get to Mexico to San Juateneo and, um, or to say Juateneo and, be with him and he's just refinishing a boat on the shore. I just yeah. think that's such a powerful scene. Like I was, I watched that movie and I said, I want that to be my life. I want to get up and just refinish my boat and have not a care in the world mm -hmm. in the tropics. And um, so I was always searching at night for properties in New Zealand or Canada, my birthplace or America or Mexico. And I would find ones for like $10 million and I'd find ones for $1,000. And it'd be all different kinds. You know, you can find islands for sale. You can find desert places and rainforest places. And I just started thinking... ...who are experts in their area. And um, the person in this area was just an expert in, like, um, in remote oceanfront properties. And this one was not oceanfront, but it was just a minute behind the ocean. And um, I kind of had it on my radar while we were traveling the world. And then... I just um, ended up getting enough money where I thought I can I can purchase it, and so I did. And you said at the time, you know, this would be great, but it was a tough time because we we weren't engaged, and we had been together now for about a year and a half, maybe. Mm -hmm. And so Nicole really had to make a jump and say, "Am, am I really going to take this relationship to the next level and join this guy in this remote place?" And I did. <laughs> I'm thankful that she did. Me too. Thanks. <laughs> okay. Okay, so uh, Derek up there did a super chat. Derek asked a question of what's the next big project? Oh, this is a good question. <clears throat> well, I think we already kind of talked about it. Uh, we are building a bigger home um, out of shipping containers. You know, we love the yurt, but, you know, with a family, it's, it's a little small. Um, so the goal is to have the yurt and the bunkies be for family and close friends that come to visit. Yeah, so we're gonna build a shipping container, um, which we're really excited about. It's gonna take time. You know, we're gonna build it ourselves, the whole thing. Um, so that's a big project that we're working on. And then another thing is, uh, we've talked about it before, but we're connecting the yurt to one of the bunkies. Um, mm -hmm. So we have a hallway in between. So while we're building the shipping container, we have a little bit more space in the yurt. Um, so Somebody's asking why shipping containers. It's cool. <laughs> and it's just reusing the shipping containers. You know, there's so many shipping containers that are just going into landfills or just going on the land and wasting away. So we're going to take the shipping containers and re reuse them after being used. Go look it up. All the, the supply chain that brings you all the stuff that you, that you buy and use, everything that you have is brought by those shipping containers. Yeah. And, and they're, they're usually used and then they're abandoned in... Yeah, and in they're... The they're you already got like the shell of the house so you're saving like you're not using as much wood um they're a lot stronger for like hurricanes and wind storms which you know we have a lot of here not Bears. hurricanes 
bears, you know, um, so they're already kind of like pre-built out. You just got to go and do the window. I mean, there's, I know there's a lot more to it than just like, oh, putting in the windows and you're done. But um, you guys are going to see it. We're going to cover it on YouTube here, here, right? Yeah. Like you still have to do the insulation and, and the electrical and all that stuff, but you're pretty much getting like the shell of your home and then you kind of go from there. So right now we're picking. <laughs> it's starting to rain. <laughs> it is. We're getting out of here. We know, we know what the sunniest spot of the property is. The yurt has a really good hard foundation. We found the old logging road and it's like tough foundation. It doesn't sink into the forest, but it's not the sunniest spot. So we, we picked the sunniest spot. We're gonna, we're clearing it right now. We're gonna put a, um, a foundation on there and then stack these containers on there. And we're gonna show you guys. Yeah, so there's our projects. Bigger home and then a, a hallway. So plant with uh, Debbie. Super, the, the super chats are ruling the chat right now because if you super chat, we'll definitely answer your question. Yeah. Uh, plant with Debbie, unless we don't like your question. <laughs> <laughs> Debbie is saying, how much land is enough to homestead and sustain? That's a great question. That's a good question because when we, the way that this area, not all areas are the same. Well, actually, a lot of areas are, are designed for 160 acres. So rain? think about back in the cowboy days. Go watch yeah. this movie called uh, Far and Away with Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman. Far and Away. At the end, Tom Cruise has to go and he has to race for his land, you know, and there in America, there were races for land. They used to give out 160 Sorry acre plots to farmers. Um, and in this area of Canada, they, they took this area and they gave plots to Norwegians to come here and farm. And so a lot of times you'll find properties that are, oh no. that are fractions of 160 acres. You'll find like 40 acre properties or 20 acre properties or four acre properties. So these were four acre properties um, and you could choose to buy multiple to piece them together. So I think that if you had, personally, my opinion, if you had two acres, I think you could have a really comfortable, self-sustaining, off the grid life. You didn't even have a full acre in your, in Arizona. In Phoenix, I had half of an acre, so but, I, think, but I wasn't growing 100% of my So I think if yet. you could just get raw land, you know, you however much you have, like like that's a start, and, you know. And pack it full of stuff. Yeah, like you can really pack it full. So I'm like, in, if you knew me in Arizona, I had a half acre um, property that I grew as a food forest. But I honestly, I really needed that extra half an acre to have more fruit trees and gardens. So having one acre, I could have definitely grown enough food for myself. Okay. But having two acres, now you definitely would have enough to have like a a comfortable off-grid life. I think two acres is mm -hmm. would make your homestead sustainable and comfortable. I think we should get to one more question and we should head in because it's starting to You guys see the rain? It's raining all over Fox. Okay, one more question. Um, let's see here. The last question, is it raining there now? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Not, yes. Do you feel the rain? Uh, yeah. um, so here's two questions here. Do you guys use uh, sun cream, like suntan lotion and cosmetics in general? And how do you replace those? And are you going to get animals like goats and chickens? Um, so the first question, no, I don't use any cosmetic stuff. I'm really, personally, I'm really against oxybenzone. Look it up. Oxybenzone is in most of the SPF sunscreens and it's actually a carcinogen. It causes cancer. But um, no, I don't. I mean, I up. use oil. I'll do like a uh, we use a lot of coconut oil. Or if we know we're going to get tons of sun and get burned, we cover up yeah. with like clothing. Yeah. So. Um, and and then, uh, uh, goats and chickens. Yes. We would love to get chickens. Nicole is natural. She, I think that Nicole is like, is so beautiful. She, she doesn't hardly ever wear makeup, but she looks beautiful all the time. Like I can't even tell you're not wearing makeup right now. No, I'm not. <laughs> just, she just looks good all the time to me. Thanks. So I just, I love looking at this, uh, this chick over here on the right. <laughs> Um, we would love to get chickens. We, you know, we've been wanting chickens since we've got here, but we've had to clear for it and we have to make sure that we really build uh, a structure that can house them um, to be safe from the cougar, the marten, and all that. So, like, we have to really be, uh, I don't know what, what I'm thinking of. Here. We have to be diligent with the structure. Yeah, and we and don't have it cleared all the way yet for that, but we'd love to get animals like that so and also the animals like having chickens was my goal like having about 30 <laughs> chickens <laughs> but two things happen with chickens like i want to go off and adopt hens that people can't keep anymore 
and bring them here like a sanctuary and then have the eggs. Yeah. But to breed your own chickens, now you're going to have 50% roosters and you have to, you have to butcher them. Yeah. So you really want to start butchering roosters. And um, if we ever wanted to leave and travel somewhere, which we love to do, you have to always find somebody to watch the chickens while you're gone. Yeah. So one day we will. Anyway. Goats, goats would be amazing. I've always wanted to have goats. Not only just for um, eating the vegetation and creating compost, but uh, anyways. Yeah. Okay. Love you guys. Thanks for listening to us. Hope this was informative. Please tell us in the comments right now if this was informative and if you liked videos like, like this. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us on our live. <laughs> Lives are always so hard. <laughs> but uh, we have a new video coming out this week, hopefully. Yeah. Like Thursday or next Sunday, but I think probably Thursday. So. Hopefully a new full hour long so, episode. Yeah, and keep um, asking questions in the comments and we'll get in there and answer. And um, But yeah, have a great rest of your Sunday and peace out. Say goodbye, Fox. Oh. He's like, I need to get out of the rain. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I need Dad's hat. Yeah. Bye, guys.